Mike. Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and today I'll be showing you around the 2015 Chasson Flash 610. So on the driver's side of the vehicle, the first thing you're going to get over behind the driver's cab door is the LPG locker, so your gas locker, liquid petroleum gas. And this opens with the round headed key. So once you've turned it, you can open it up and in there you'll get a six kilogram gas bottle. So always make sure it is strapped in. You attach the pigtail to the regulator. It is just a left hand thread and hand tightened, so no need for a spanner. And then you turn it on at the bottle. Always make sure it is turned off when traveling just to be safe in case you were involved in a collision. The gas is sec securely switched off. And then you put your, your fridge vents, your awning, your awning light. I'll show you your awning in a moment. You've got your toilet, so your toilet's in here. This is your cassette, so again, it opens with a round headed key. If you want to pinch that and then lift the orange handle up and slide it out, you've got wheels there to drag it around the site once it is full. So you would take this if you are on a site to the waste disposal point, which is normally behind or to the side of the toilet block. You take the cover off. You press this button at the back here, which allows a bit of airing, stops it glugging and lets it flow all consistently. Tip it out. Once you've tipped it out, there's normally a tap there, put some water in, give it a slosh around again, tip it out again. And then if you were using the liquid form of chemical, it's a cap full, tipped into here, and then it's ready to go back into the vehicle. Or if it was a the tablet form, you put a pint of water in the cassette, push it back in, and then drop a sachet, which is the chemical, down in the tablet form, down the cassette, toilet, and into the cassette and that will break up to the liquid. You'll not get this cassette out if the slide door, the blade is, clo is open. It's got to be closed, but I'll show you that from inside as well. And then below, you've got a, a mark in here, which is your waste water. So there'll be a handle here, which there is, and directly in the middle of the tank. So there is no pipe coming out the tank. It's directly through the floor of the tank. If you just open it, so normally your drive is close or on top of the grid or hole in the ground on the site on the way out and drop your water. At the back you've got your garage, so to work your garage locks, you do a half a turn and, and you've got to point the little arrow to the front of the van and push it in and then to get out just half a turn back turn it the other way so the arrow is pointing at the back of the vehicle then you can open your garage and in here you've got a light you've got tethering points on the rail there's your own unwinding handle you've got it's heated by the diesel heating you've got 12 volt and you've got 240 you've also got a rear access panel and it'll have a side access panel and your torn eyes down there as well. And then coming round to the back of the vehicle, you've got that panel to get in for a bit better loading of bikes and things. You've got a high level brake light, a support bar for the bike racks. This is where the body has been um, constructed to hold the weight. And then you've got your reversing camera. Further around, you've got your other door for your garage. You've got your mains hook up. So always hook, you've got to hook the vehicle up. You get your 25 meter hook up lead, lift the collar, lift the flap, and slide it on here. Always hook the vehicle up first, and then the side, as we wouldn't want you walking around with a live lead in the rain. And then there's a small blue lever that you push down to unhook. Next to it, this is your fresh water intake. So Again, you'd use a key, you'd open this up. Hose pipe in there until it overflows or you're happy you've got enough water on board, which you can see on the main control panel. If you were going wild camping, you will have to take a full tank of water with you. If you're going to a site, take a maximum of 20 litres of fresh water. Only because it gives you a better payload to put more gear in the vehicle and it improves your fuel economy. 
in the winter it's very important that you drain all the water down so you don't open your waste you don't drain your fresh and you drain your boiler i'll show you your boiler from inside but to drain your fresh if you look directly up here there's a black bung this one here it's a 15 mil push fit and to drain a tank completely you have to pull that off and that'll allow all the water out underneath the tank and just it will drain directly onto the ground and then this is your Truma boiler flue so when heating the water on gas this cover must come off so if you just put a bit of pressure on the top there put your thumb in the middle and peel it off when heating the water on gas this must be off as it allows the gas exhaust emissions to come out if this was to be on you'd get a field button a little red mark on your switch if you try to ignite it too many times and go oh bugger i forgot the cover it's still on you've got to come out take the cover off if you just blow into here or blow around here and clear eliminate any gas that's in there and then it will try and light again on gas but if you're heating your water on electric you can leave the cover on best place to put that once you've taken it off is in the passenger door pocket there that on the door card also you've got your fuel so this is an easy filling system with it being forward so you just push the no nozzle in there's no need for a cap so that's your easy fuel filling system your leisure battery is underneath your passenger seat and your Ford engine battery is under your driver so if you ever need access to any of those batteries you've got to lift the seat out so there's a bolt two bolts on the front and two bolts on the back which are torque spits and then lifts the seats out to turn your passenger airbag off so you have a child car seat in the front you put your key in here and you turn it to off and then to open your bonnet you've got to use the Ford key the main ignition key so you've got one and two there so you turn it to the left for one which releases the bonnet and to the right for two which will release the catch and then in here you've got your antifreeze for your radiator fluid you've got your positive for a jump lead so your red lead would go on here and your earth which is your black lead will go off the engine hoist down here the loop you've got your power steering fluid your brake fluid the main one you're going to need which is your screen wash you've got your oil filler and your dipstick is down here there your weight plates here yeah, so it's three and a half ton gross vehicle weight so that's the vehicle on its own if you were to put a trailer on and tow anything with a tow bar you can tow up to a max train weight of 5.5 ton you've got your front and back axle weights you've got your Ford chassis number there and you've got your HOF number which is your unique build number so if you ever need parts for the vehicle if you just quote that number and then this little sensor here is your sensor for your cat one alarm so this is your bonnet release so if anyone tries to um, get underneath your bonnet when the alarm's set on this will set the alarm off and also on the driver's door pillar you've got your tyre pressures here so this is where you'll find your tyre pressures for inflating your tyres so once inside this is your main control panel so your master switch is here which illuminates green it'll then tell you if you're hooked up or not at the minute we are on mains 240 volt as we've got the hookup in so it, it, the hookup symbol there it's got a green light next to it which, which means we're hooked up if you didn't have this you'd be running off the leisure battery which we, would be 12 volt only and it wouldn't be your three pin plug so you'd only be able to use 12 volt appliances next to it you've got your lights so these are all your down lights and then they all are individually switched around the vehicle You've got your pump, which you must put on to use your toilet, your shower, your hand basin, your kitchen sink. You've got your awning light, so same light, but a different way so on the outside of the vehicle. And then these buttons down here correspond with these down the side. So you've got the one of the trailer, 
which is your leisure battery reading so it's fully charged there you've got the one of the truck which is your Ford which is fully charged as well you've got a water one so this is fresh water so we've got half a tank of fresh water on board and then this is completely empty and this would go with a little red tab next to it little mark which means your waste water is full if this panel was too bright for the people sleeping in the um, drop down bed if you just press and hold you can dim or brighten the panel like so to operate your Webasto diesel heating simply turn from off to on always start it at full power as this speeds up the combustion of the diesel and then you can turn it to your desired temperature you'll notice when the heating is turned on at start that the lights in the living area will start flickering a little that's nothing to be worried about that is just because this diesel is heater is taking a higher amount of electricity and is working so you see the lights flickering until it's started up in your kitchen, you've got three gas burners, but you will need a igniter. So, so, there, so they're all lit now, once you've had them on for any length of time, allow it to cool before you put your glass lid down as there is a risk of shattering it. Above you have, so if you just push the handles down to lift the cupboards, so in this one you've got a rack and in this one you've got your solar panel regulator and a 12 volt socket, so it's saying it's green. Green flashing means it's the battery one is full, which is your leisure battery. There is a terminal here to get it ran to either a second battery or the engine battery in the future. And you've got a 12 volt socket. Below, cutlery tray, and this is just a drainer for in the sink. You've got your ice cube maker. More storage, the storage in here and storage under there. And then opposite it you've got your grill. So you've got a light here and then you've got your grill. If you're struggling to light your grill, your, your fridge, your boiler on gas, always bring it through the hob first. This is the easiest place to, to bring it to in the highest point in the van. And then you've got your freezer and fridge and operate. Turn on here. So once you've turned it on, you'll get what source you want to be on. So at the moment we're on mains 240 electric and on full temperature. You change the temperature, just press the square button until everything starts flashing, and then you can move it along. So there you can select The battery, the battery isn't your leisure battery, it's your engine battery when the engine is running. The alternator sends a feed to your fridge. You've got a red button, a red light flashing on the on button, which means it's failed. It's only failed because we are on the forecourt at the moment and we aren't running. Once the engine is started, this will send power. But the idea with the 12 volt is if you're lucky enough to keep this at home or you've got a storage yard with mains power, you hook the vehicle up the day before, you put your shopping in, allow it to cool overnight. And then when you do start traveling, you put on the battery, it'll, it won't increase the temperature, it'll just keep it at the same, keep everything fresh for when you're traveling until you get to a site where you can either put on, on a gas or you can put on to electric. If you wanted to go on to gas, so press the button again and select your next source, which is the gas flame. Press enter. This is your temperature from one bar to five bars. Press OK again, and then that self-ignites on gas. Part of your winterizing process or when you're leaving the van for any length of time 
if you do clean the fridge and the freezer out last thing you want to do is shut the door because then the seal it's sealed and all that air is getting trapped and it's going to become smelly moldy air and it's going to mold and moss will start growing in your fridge so what you need to do underneath both of these catches if you lift them up you've got a little grey tab if you just pull the little fella out push it into there on both what that does is it allows air circulation in and out the fridge during when the vehicle is standing and not being used to stop any um, smelly air getting in and also on the bottom of your fridge you've got this catch here which is your travel catch so stop it opening while you're on the road just slide that it'll stop the fridge door from opening when you're traveling underneath your fridge you've got three gas taps which are for the fridge the hob and the oven so if there's any problems with gas turn them off at, at the bottle these are mainly for when the vehicle ha is habitation service just to keep the um just to keep you safe so when it's habitation check they will check the gas just to make sure it's all working accordingly to keep you safe using the motorhome and operate your large skylight in your kitchen area if you pull the winder out and then you wind Lift it up and then you can wind your closet. Do make sure all your windows and skylights are closed when travelling. And you'll also get a little red tab here that indicates when it is shut. A little red line in there. And then you just have a blackout blind for an evening. And a fly screen to keep the unwanted guests out when open. Now in your bathroom. So this little rocker switch is your lights for in your bathroom and showroom area. Underneath you've got your toilet cabinet. You've got one above here and you've got one in here. You've also got a towel rail. And to operate your fed for the toilet, so at the back here, you've got your blue button, which is your flush, which you'll see in a minute. Let's put water into the bowl. So to deposit your waste in the cassette, this is your blade or also known as your slide or your trap door if you slide that to the right it opens it and allows it into the cassette this must be closed to get the cassette out of the exterior of the vehicle like I said outside otherwise you won't get it out and then you'll have to come back into the vehicle close it to empty your cassette and on this diagram here it'll go red when the cassette is full it needs replenished with chemical emptied and topped back up to open your windows, open the levers, push it out, it'll stay out, push it all the way out and to bring it in. But do make sure they're closed when travelling because all your skylights and windows are just plastic so a good strong gust of wind will just rip them off the vehicle and that's not something you want. And then you've got two catches here which open your wardrobe, your large wardrobe. So you've got your hanging rail, your shelves, infill cushions for your bed, your ladder inflation kit and your inflation uh, gunk which goes in there and is the foam to fill the tyre but once you fill if you've used this on the tyre the tyre is then needs to be um, changed so if you can just try and if it is only a small puncture just try and top it up with air and get somewhere where you can have your tyre repaired because you can get your tyre repaired a lot cheaper than replacing the whole tyre should it be saveable this is your status aerial, so if you loosen the nut off here you'll then be able to push the aerial up if you're struggling to get a signal and then use this toggle here to direct the aerial on the roof. When travelling make sure it is pulled all the way into the vehicle and this is secure but the best tip with the aerial is look where the other motorhomes and caravans are pointing on your site and point yours in the same direction. And then this is your Vision Plus TV booster, so you've got a min and a max here. So if you are struggling to get a signal, you can turn it up, or it might just need to turn down if it's a too strong of a signal. And to use this roof light, just use this little toggle and turn, and it opens this, opens the, um, the skylight for ventilation in the shower. You've also got a, a towel rail here, 
which is also good if you've been caught in the rain, put some hangers on there and hang your wet coat because it can drip dry. Shut the concertina door and this bathroom gets lovely and warm with the diesel heating on. A part of winterizing when you're draining the vehicle down, if you just unscrew the shower head and allow this hose to lie in the shower tray and any water in there will just drain out to stop the water from freezing in the shower hose because if it's up like this it'll get caught in the u-bend so also next to your diesel heating switch you've got your table switch so if you don't pull on the key if you turn the barrel but be very gentle with it turn it down this will drop the table so when you drop the table just make sure if you are making the bed, you've got it in the right space available. You've pulled these two out from underneath the seat just to give extra support on the table base. And then if you drop it down, like so. And then you can use the infill cushion. So you use the one in the wardrobe into here like so and then you use your backrest in there and then you can put a sheet on and you can put a duvet on but I turn all your cushions upside down so you get the flatter side of it than the hard because this one's got the harder side in because it's got the board at the back so it's a lot better to sleep on than the softer side to operate your TV, so this is a Project 2000 bracket, you just push this catch here and then you'll be able to pull it out, secure your telly on there like so and then you've got obviously speakers from the main cab radio in the back, you've got a 3 pin plug when hooked up, a 12 volt and a TV point. If you were getting a TV I would advise getting a 12 volt one as you can use it off the leisure battery and you don't have to be hooked up whereas if you put a normal telly in you'd have to be hooked up for the TV to work to operate the drop down bed in the ceiling if you unattach the seat belt here so you take it off you don't have to use the key because the key is now redundant this has had the upgrade of the switch put on the better switch so you just push down but make sure your lights are on because your lights must be on as the bed is on the light circuit. If not, the bed won't come down. And if you wanted to come all the way down, you'd have to remove the back cushions. And then you have got nets to stop the children rolling out if they're up there. And the ladder clips on here, which is in the garage. And these lights here, if you just touch the far sides of them, so the side to the car but the side towards the back, if you touch them, they will then work like which I'll show you in a moment. So easy lights if you just touch the ends. Like so. So behind the passenger seat on the face of the lounge seat, you've got your two boiler controls. So you've got Truma Boiler and Truma Boiler AL. AL is your 240 side of it, the boiler is your gas side. So at the minute this is filled because the cover's on. So there you are, there's the light for when the cover's on. So, you've got heating your water at 50 degrees at the top, or heating your water at 70 degrees. So if you go to heating your water at 50 degrees, like so, Just taking the cover off there so it should light. Heating your water at 50 degrees, off in the middle, or heating your water at 70 degrees. Once the water hits this temperature in the boiler, it will stop heating the water until the water cools down and it needs to reheat the water. And then you've got your Truma boiler, so you've got the same, so one kilowatt of electric, which is equivalent to 50 degrees of hot water, off in the middle and two kilowatts of electric which is equivalent to 70 degrees you can have them on both together should you be in instant need of hot water which will give you in about 10-15 minutes and then once you've 
once you've got it warmed up on the gas you can turn the gas side off and allow the electric side to carry it if you've paid your side fees you'll not want to waste your gas when you've paid for to use their electric but if you were wild camping you would just have to use the gas and not the electric as you won't be hooked up so this is under the seat so your boiler controls are on the front if you go underneath this is where you'll find the location of your Truma boiler which holds 10 litres of water at any one time in the winter it is very important that you drain the vehicle down so you want to drain the 10 litres of water out here you want to drain your fresh tank by pulling your 15 mil plumber's push fit off underneath the vehicle and you want to drain your waste and it open the boiler and allow the 10 litres of water out this yellow toggle here lying down needs to stand up like so so once it's stood up allow it to stand up over the time the vehicle is in storage over the winter this will allow any water to be drained out directly underneath the chassis to stop the water from freezing because the boiler is very expensive to repair if the water freezes in it and to replace and it's not covered under war warranty unfortunately as it's your responsibility to drain down the vehicle once you've done that if you open all the mixer taps to the middle position take the shower hook head off and allow the hose to lie in the shower tray and then when you do come to reuse the vehicle put the toggle down to this position now fill it up with water come in put the power on put the pump on go to the cold side of the tap first you'll get automatically cold water go to the hot side it will cough it'll splutter it'll make all sorts of noises and what that's doing is it's priming the water through from the main tank to the boiler, once the boiler hits 10 litres it'll start giving you pressure out your taps. Once you've got one tap do them all and then it is primed for the season. Also when we're here you've got your charger which is on here, you've got your main trips in there so the trips are in here so if your kettle or hairdryer trips the vehicle out try here before you try your sight and you've also got 12 volt blade fuses here which work your 12 volt appliances it would be a good idea to go and buy some spares just in case one of the fuses do blow you can take them out see if it's blown and put a new one in when using the traveling seats you'll want to remove this cushion here so the far passenger can get the legs down if you just lift that up like so and go and put that in the wardrobe or somewhere else you then can get your passenger feet down and it takes the cover away from this area so now going into the cab you've got your USBs here to charge off the leisure battery and there's a switch just done here which turns these lights on you've got your curtains for extra insulation when it's cold to come across the cab but you do have the Remus cab blinds which I'll show you in a second and you've got a large roof light which opens the same as the window so if you loosen toggles off push it out once it's out push it all the way out to bring it in but this must be closed whilst traveling even though it's above the cab it's just to give light when on the road you've got a blackout blind and a fly screen to keep the unwanted guests out so now in your Ford cab, you've got your handbrake to your right which is a folding handbrake so you might think that's off, it's not. Put your foot on the brake, pull the handbrake up, push the button in, you'll then see the light go off and drop and that is off now and then when you hear it ratchet back up, that's it coming back on. You've got the Remus cab blinds here so if you pinch, slide. And the same on the windscreen, pinch them. You may have to adjust the mirror ever so slightly. And the wire for the reversing camera. So if you just. And then they are just magnetic. And then coming down back to the door, you've got your windows this locks the cab on a night time and you get the padlock on the dash which says it's locked so that just locks your two cab doors and you manually lock the habitation door by lifting the 
collar up from the green to the red. You've got your adjustment for your mirrors, top and bottom. Oh, sorry, just top on the on the Ford. Side lights, main lights, front and rear fog lights, headlight adjustment. You've got an alarm indicator here, so you use this if you want to turn the ultrasonic sensors off here. So to do so, you'd have the engine on, you turn the engine off. So ignition on, ignition off, within six seconds, press and hold, it'll flash until it can flash no more. Like so. And then that's turned the ultrasonic sensors off. Also note, worth noting with the Ford, if you, for arming and disarming the vehicle, so if you lock it, it arms, if you unlock it, it disarms. But what you need to do is, because the alarm is wired into the canvas of the van, if you open, if you unlock it, and then you all get in through the habitation door, the alarm will arm again, because it'll notice the door hasn't been open within a couple of, within about 30 to 60 seconds. So, once you've turned the alarm off by pressing unlock, if you're just opening the driver's door, open it, shut it, and then you can open your habitation door and get in the back of the van and then the alarm should not go off. You've got your wipers, you've got all your, um, so you've got your volume, skip your track, and M just skips the source of the radio from FM to AM to phone to auxiliary to USB. This will go through your trip computer, so it'll tell you your miles per gallon, your average time, your instant, and so on. You've got your speed, cruise control, and your limiter here. Lights, indicators here, sorry, your lights are down there, thinking it's a fate. And then you do have your heated mirrors. To open this section here, you've got a small lever here, so if you just push that in, you've then got a 3.5mm auxiliary input for the radio and a 12 volt plug there. So this is great for plugging your sat nav in here because it's got two cutouts for the wires so you can keep the majority of the wire in there, plug it in and have it neatly on your windscreen. It's got six speed manual gearbox with up and lift for reverse which will bring on your rear view camera. But your rear view camera is on permanently as well so even when going forward like where they are now we're in neutral there's your rear view camera working. You've got your radio. So it is just FM, AM, so once you've found your favourite FM channel, if you press 1 to 9, press and hold, you can preset. You can go to auxiliary, which can either be Bluetooth audio, USB, or the 3.5mm jack. So if you, go, if you want to set your phone up, if you go to phone, menu, so phone menu, add a device, press OK, it'll then ask you to find Ford Bluetooth on your device. Once you've found Ford Bluetooth, it'll ask you to press pair, make sure the pins match, pair, then it'll ask you if you want to sync your phone book, press yes, so whoever rings will come up on here that it's, it's Jimmy calling or whoever, you'll be able to answer, instead of just a number. Below you've got all your primary controls, so you've got your fan speed, Your recirculation button, so circulating there within the vehicle. Your temperature. Your aircon. Must be on at least one or more for your aircon to work and then your distribution to where you want there to go to. You can also have the diesel heating in the motorhome running when the engine is running. So when you're driving to heat the rear of the motorhome up, you can have that if you've got passengers in the back. Or some people like it on because it is quite a good, it's quite a nice heat when on the road. Put your glove box and that is your Ford cab. The tip with your cab blinds as well. So these are just magnetic strips. So when it is going to be a windy night, blustery night, if you put elastic band or bubble around here, it stops it pinging open should there be slight movement in the van. 
with the wind. And that is your water at temperature now, that is red hot and up the temperature on gas and electric. So use your awning, just use your winding handle, put in the front here over the loop, wind it out until you can reach inside of the canopy at the front. So probably to about there. And then you do have two legs so if you grab at the, the back, grab at the front, pop the legs out and then use the nut to operate the telescopic leg. Get both of them down as soon as possible. And then if you walk it out further, so one of you walk it, one of you move the legs, peg the feet out, but wind and awnings don't mix. So if it is windy, get the awning in, don't leave it out. So even if you go to bed, you think it's gonna be a nice night, get it in. If you go out for the day, get the awning in, don't leave it out because we've the, all I'll do is the wind will push the awning straight over the top of the van and cause damage to the, to the roof of the vehicle and that's not something you want so just be very careful with the awning in the wind and then if you wind it and then you've got the C-rail here for your drive away awnings it's on like so